as you as you are joining into this broadcast, you can share this broadcast and say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. I'm talking to you on here about prophetic mysteries. Um, and I, I want you to always be uh, in the mode of praising God and thanking God so that your soul could stay in the flow of your personal anointing. The personal anointing that keeps you in wisdom and in light and in freedom and in the blessing. While you're praising God and thanking the Lord, you mold your soul back into humility consecutively. You get yourself back into humility and meekness, teachability, readiness to serve, and having the right spirit, a contrite spirit. Impatience is a deadly spirit that is in the uh, kingdom of darkness that will target everyone when God calls you to do a work for him. The spirit of impatience, it corrupts an individual and makes them wicked. The spirit of impatience causes a person to lose the progress that they have made in the spirit. And impatience is every wrong decision. When someone gets impatient, they'll start to do and say things that they're not supposed to. Demons get you out of the schedule of God through the tactic of impatience. Remember, impatience literally means that your mind is finding another way to do something that you're thinking about. Is finding another way to do something that God probably had in his plan to do. And patience is a magnet for witchcraft. When David went go number the army, it was an act of impatience. The impatience of him numbering the army was he felt as though he was at a rush for time and he needed confidence to know that he was going to win the battle. So now he steps into the same method of average kings, wicked kings, satanic kings on earth. And he does the same thing that they do, which is number the army to find out if the army was legit enough to win rather than trusting the power of God to give him victories in life. You have to be careful of that as well, not to take on the spirit of carnality where you think that all of your victories will come because you could physically see them. You could pick the pieces to the other puzzle together and say, well, I know that I'm going to have victory because I see this happening and this happening. When really victory happens at the spur of the moment, suddenly. Miracles happen suddenly. Deliverance happens suddenly. Money cometh suddenly. Ideas that change your whole life come to you suddenly. When Jesus was talking to Nicodemus about being born again, he told him that the Holy Spirit is like wind. How the Holy Spirit, he gave the comparison to wind, that you could hear the wind blowing, but you can't see it. You can't discern it. So are those that are born of the spirit. Jesus was literally telling Nicodemus that how I operate, I operate in an uncommon way where even though it doesn't look like it is, it is. Even, does it, even though it doesn't look like it's happening, it's happening. Even though it doesn't look like it's, it's on its way, it's on its way. And a lot of people miss that that King Jesus was literally saying, 
if you're going to live out all of my promises, my word, what I told you I was going to do, you're not going to get there by looking around and saying, oh, it looks like I'm about to have a debt-free house. Or it looks like I'm about to have a debt-free car. Or it looks like I'm about to get promoted at my job. And, oh, it looks like I'm about to have favor. Or it looks like I'm about to get healed in my body. Because miracles happen suddenly. Think about it. Naaman in one minute is mad at Elisha. Next minute, he obeys Elisha. Next minute, his skin comes out of water like baby skin. He goes from having crocodile skin, dry skin, monstrous skin, to having baby skin in one moment. Look at the changer. Look at the changer. Impatience is a dangerous spirit because when you allow impatience to live inside of you, you will violate God's presence. You'll violate him. You'll do something he doesn't want you to do. You'll hurt God. You'll hurt his presence. Impatience means, Lord, I'm not willing to wait. I'll do it myself. I don't trust your schedule. I don't trust your ideas. I don't trust your wisdom. I don't trust your planning. Let me plan and make it happen for myself. Impatience is rooted in pride. Pride is an impartation of Lucifer's character. Pride is the beginning of demotion. Pride is the beginning of falling, falling away. Impatience is a sponge for pride. People get impatient sexually. People get impatient financially. People get impatient mentally. People get impatient physically with their health. There are people that go through sickness and disease that get impatient in their sickness and disease. Impatience also cultivates disrespectful words in prayer. When you're impatient, you talk to God with rudeness, with crudeness. When you're impatient, you talk to God with animosity, jealousy, comparison, indignation, wickedness. When, when you're impatient, you will use your tongue as an evil device of combat with the Holy Ghost. Impatience makes you plan against God. Impatience makes you plan against God. If you look at the impatience of Moses last minute, when he strikes the rock, that impatience affected God. The Lord told him, everything I told you I was going to do, I'm not interested in doing it no more. I'm not, and I'm not going to do it. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Impatience is dangerous because it, it, it slaps God in the face and say, I don't really fear you. And I don't take you serious. Every act of impatience is you crucifying the son of God again. When you're impatient, you can't praise God because impatience is not a celebration system towards the Lord. It's a celebration system towards your flesh. Impatience will not have you praise God. Impatience will not have you learn. Impatience will not have you submit. Impatience will make you a loose cannon. It'll make you angry. It'll make you violent. It'll make you frustrated. It'll make you stressed out. Impatience is where the soul of someone who used to be God's friend entertained the thought of being his enemy. I want to say this one more time. Impatience is with the soul of someone that used to be God's friend. They consider, they entertain the thought to be his enemy. Whenever you're impatient, your vision is clouded. You don't know what you're doing no more. When you're impatient, you plant yourself in confusion. Impatience, it takes the brain into the depths of hell. You live out of Sheol. 
Sheol is a location in eternity where people go that didn't govern their soul. People go that didn't cast down vain imaginations. People go down to Sheol as a place of torment where fallen angels occupy that region in eternity. Right now, there's innumerable people down there in Sheol today. People that live lives where they lost their soul. Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul? Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul? People that lose their own soul, Sheol, they go through that segment of hell. And Sheol is a very tormenting place because the spirits that had you wrestle with God in your soul during the duration of your life in your body. Those spirits materialize and manifest and you get, actually see them. See, demon spirits don't want you to see them while you're in your body. So, so it takes somebody to be still before God to even recognize if you have demons. You, you, I mean, demons goal is not for you to recognize them. A demon's goal is not for you to be able to detect that they exist with you. That's the whole goal of demons. To hide. To deceive. To trick. Sheol is a location for people that didn't govern their soul. They didn't take dominion over their soul. Let me say this to you, people of God. Be careful of impatience. Impatience is where one neglects their anointing. To return to sin. Impatience is where one neglects their anointing to return to sin. When someone is impatient, they take off the garment, the mantle in which they carry, and they succumb to weakness. The Word of God, we see that the people that was in the upper room rejected the demon of impatience. They prayed on one accord. All of them thanking God and praising God and waiting for the Lord to pour out his spirit on them and do what he promised them. A lot of people don't see it like this, but those people in the 120, they all received their harvest because they rejected the demon of impatience. We see the life of Joseph even though his brothers rejected him, even though injustice happened to him, he stayed in patience. He stayed in patience. And even when impatience confronted Joseph, he never let it guide his emotions. He never let it guide his mentality. If you remember when the butler and the baker were fired and they went to jail, remember when Joseph saw them, Joseph told them, why are y'all sad? A sad person does not say that to another sad person. He rebuked them for being sad because he had joy. Remember, impatience steals your joy. When you're impatient, you don't have joy. When you're impatient, you miss all the blessings that God has given to you. Oxygen in your body, the opportunity to live, the opportunity to change what you did wrong. Impatience, 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 deadly and poisonous. And when you're impatient, you do nothing right. When you're impatient, you don't even desire to do what is right. Impatience steals away the energy for righteousness. Impatience steals away the energy for prayer, steals away the energy for faith, steals away the energy to study, steals away the energy to meditate. Impatience steals away the energy to forgive someone that may have wronged you or you just don't like them. Impatience is a robbery of how God wanted you to approach situations, moments, seasons. Some people get into seasons. The season was an opportunity 
an opportunity for them to prove that their heart was genuine. They get into situations, they start asking God questions. How come you don't you not answer me? How come? Why? 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 They get all mad. Impatience makes you forget the opportunities to prove your stewardship to God and pay your vows. Oftentimes you tell God, I'll do this, I'll do that. The time comes for you to officially show it, you get impatient. You get impatient. Patience makes you battle, not with things that are not supposed to be in you, makes you battle with God. When you're impatient, you fight the wrong person. You fight the wrong person. The Holy Ghost is not your problem. But impatience is a demon that points to the Holy Ghost and say, look, look, you saw that person die? Look, look. Some people blame God for people that died. And, and that person had high blood pressure and ate salt, did what they wanted to do, did all type of crazy stuff with their body. They didn't care about their body. Then when they die, people start blaming God. How could God let this happen? Oh, so we're going to act like the person didn't take care of their health. Okay. We're going to act like the person disregarded wisdom. We're going we gonna to act like the person did not know that their health wasn't good. They felt breathless. They felt not good, but they still didn't get the right amount of sleep. Still didn't take care of their health. Still didn't put in the wisdom in their health equation. But then when death comes, God gets the blame. Impatience, it'll never show you the truth. When you're impatient, you live a deceived life. Why did Jesus be able to be on that cross and hear them laughing at him, scorning him, calling him a blasphemer, mocking him? Why didn't he come down and fight? Because he rejected the demon of impatience. Why did Daniel not cuss out his co-workers after they had convinced the king to pass a law that would send him to the lion's den because nobody was supposed to pray for those 30 days. Nobody was supposed to call on God. And what did Daniel do? He did not yield to that fallen angel of impatience. Daniel praised God. He prayed and he kept his spirit excellent. That means that he ignored the option to be messy, to be carnal, to be fleshly, to be blind, to be a failure. He rejected failure. He rejected failure. He chose to be a finisher and he rejected failure. Whenever you say no to impatience, you will finish every task that God give you. You won't look to the left or to the right. You'll make it to your destiny. If you turn away impatience, you'll bring your flesh underneath subjection. If you turn away impatience, your eye will return back to singleness and you won't let the devil have you watching stuff you're not supposed to watch. You won't pitch yourself in the predicament where you lose the battle mentally, emotionally to demons that battled your mother and father before you came on the scene. The same principality, same familiar spirits aiming at you. You'll win the battle and have a different result if you reject impatience. The reason why we see David able to conquer Goliath because he patiently waited on God. Everybody else was impatient. Their impatience linked them to their fears. You look at the brothers of David. His brothers were impatient as well. They say, you need to go back with the sheep. Go back. Go back. Where? What are you doing? All of them was impatient. They was weary. They didn't want to wait on God for the strategy how to defeat Goliath. They wanted to live defeated lives without putting in no effort. And David chose patience. That's why God was able to tell him to take up those five stones. That's why God was able to show him where to aim those five stones, that one stone. See, 
All of your clarity is in rejecting the demon of impatience. Now David takes that stone, he throws it at the forehead and tattoos that forehead of Goliath with that stone and destroys an enemy that was intimidating hundreds of thousands of the Israelites, the army of, of Israel. And watch what took place. Now everybody is delivered because of one man's patience. Everybody is set free because of one man's patience. Everybody comes into the blessing because of one man's patience. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that one sinner destroys much good. One sinner. One sinner destroys much good. That's in Ecclesiastes 9.18. One sinner destroys much good. One sinner destroys much good. Ecclesiastes 9.18. And why does a person become a sinner? Because they're impatient. Remember, a sinner is not someone that makes a mistake, that does something one time and then repents and learns and let God teach them. A sinner is someone that constantly does what they want, when they want, how they want, with who they want. A sinner is someone that constantly goes against God's counsel. A sinner is a repetitive offender of God's presence. So, what is the revelation of a sinner? A sinner is an impatient person. A sinner is a person that say, I will not wait. I will not let God show me how to come out of this. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to say what I want. I'm going to watch what I want. I'm going to have what I want. I'm going to be who I want. And that impatience births a sinner. Now you know why Jesus, the Bible said, he was tempted in all points, yet he did not sin because Jesus rejected impatience. Jesus refused impatience. Jesus said no to impatience. And when he said no to impatience, he had power over sin. When he said no to impatience, he had power over his mind. When he said no to impatience, he had power over the winds. The winds obeyed him. The waves obeyed him. Body parts obeyed him. Dead people obeyed him. Demons obeyed him. The sea obeyed him. The region obeyed him. Legion obeyed him. Everything obeyed his dominion because he rejected the spirit of impatience. When somebody refuses impatience, you unlock your dominion. You unlock the dominion to decree a thing. You unlock the dominion to prophesy to your atmosphere. You unlock the dominion to prophesy wealth, prophesy health, prophesy to your children, prophesy to your family, your household. When you reject the spirit of impatience, you could talk to things and it will bow it knee to you because when you talk, is Jesus talking in you? Is the spirit of Christ testifying out of your own being, out of your own mouth? And you will not fail God if you put in the work to say no to the demon of impatience. Somebody got to do it. Everybody can't keep on falling prey to the demon of impatience. Everybody can't keep on making excuses because they're losing to the spirit of impatience. Everybody can't keep on making the wrong decision because of the demon of impatience. Everybody can't keep on saying the wrong words because of the demon of impatience. Somebody got to step it up and say, no, I say no to this spirit of impatience. I'm a follow the way of God. I say no to this spirit of impatience. I'm going to let the Lord have his way with me. I'm going to say no to this spirit of impatience. I'm going to let the harvest happen the way that God wants it to happen. I refuse the spirit of impatience.